to you call it in the early 90s. I was always kind of creative. Even as a child, I used to go out in the woods and collect leaves and press them and make little books about botany and trees and plants. And I've always just enjoyed doing that. It's one of those things that you kind of push aside, I think, as you're growing up sometimes. And then later in life, you pick it up again. Yeah. My elders told me that I, um, I do relate to fish and especially salmon because they swim against the current. And I think I made a lot of interesting choices as a young person. <laughs> so maybe I did spend some time swimming against the current. I'm in love with fish. <laughs> when I moved here, I started working at the Canadian Princess Resort and then I started fishing with them and then eventually became a captain. But going out fishing, I was always amazed at these things that we would pull out of the ocean. There's these cool prehistoric rat fish and they're so cool looking and they're really weird and you know basket stars and there's just crazy stuff down there and I fell in love with rockfish. They can live to be really old and one rockfish can live on one side of the reef and another rockfish can live on the other side of the reef and they might never meet. <laughs> they just keep to a very small area so it's amazing that some of them even breed. We didn't just catch the fish, I wanted to learn about the fish and I think that's a little bit of a throwback to when I was a kid collecting those leaves and learning about the trees and making my own little botany books is I always want to know, every, I'm very curious I guess. So the more I learned about these fish, the more I learned how cool they were. I've had some people kind of say that it's almost cartoony and I guess I kind of do look for that happy part. I mostly do fish and and birds and animals and, and I think I do make it down to its most basic form instead of realism. So I don't know if cartoony is the right word, but uh, it's a little bit uh, animated, I guess. I usually kind of have it in my head what I'm gonna do before I do it. And a lot of times it's based on my current kind of circumstances. I love tuna fishing, so I, painted a few tuna. There's one in the Praz Art Show right now and um, one of them happily resides in Washington at a fish plant. The herring are really cool to me. The herring fishery was recent here and it's over now but and the spawn. I read a thing about an aquarium in the U.S. that doesn't even have a herring on display because they considered them so threatened. So because I am a fisher person by trade it's a real there's a real balance there. So sometimes I try to show that in some of my artwork and focus on that a little bit. I like to talk about the herring, so anybody that wants to talk about that, or the fishing industry. We're working really hard just to market towards um, more of an experience. Instead of people that want to come out and fill up their coolers, we're trying to take out people that want to come out and catch a fish and barbecue it for lunch or take it home for dinner. With a lot of the rockfish, I'm really happy to tell people about how long they live and we have this cool little descending device so I can send them back down and they can live. There's a rockfish called the tiger rockfish, which is my very favorite and we don't catch them very often and I'm pretty good at convincing people to send those back down. <laughs> I don't think I would be doing my fish if I lived somewhere else. Absolutely not. These are real West Coast fish. <laughs> a lot of them don't even go down as far as California. Some of them go up as far as Alaska. Even though they're cartoony, I try to be fairly accurate with the number of spines they have and that sort of thing. But those, these are definitely West Coast fish. Absolutely. I don't think I'd be making these if I was somewhere else. Sometimes it's kind of funny because we'll catch a fish that's a pretty common fish and I'll whip out my camera and start taking pictures and our guests think they have some phenomenally crazy cool thing, which it is a phenomenally crazy cool thing, but they think it's very special. I do use the photos for reference. I want to make sure I have the stripes in the right area and the proper number and the I mean, most of them have the same number of spines. There's a couple exceptions, but I think my favorite is lingcod, which is which is on my business card and stuff. And I don't have any of them here. I saw them very really fast, but they take a long time to make. But I think they're my favorite. They're super cool looking fish. <laughs> my um, my old deckhand's wife used to say they were like the the leopard print of the fish world, right? So that naturally makes them cool because <laughs> and they've got great big teeth and big fins. I don't know, they're neat looking. I don't know that I even consider myself an artist. There's this weird thing and 
in my head, I couldn't justify being an artist. It was only just in the last few years I actually <laughs> returned to university to take some art courses so that I could feel legit. <laughs> I think it changed um, how I make my art. Things are a little freer, I think, for me now. And my teacher suggested that I mix some of my looser stuff with my hard lines and stuff. So I've been making an effort to do that. So it's definitely changed how I make art. Maybe I feel a little more legit. I have <laughs> some credentials or something. I had a cousin that was really good at art when I was a kid and I really admired her and she also always encouraged me. And I was just like, oh, I wanna be able to do that. And she kept telling me to practice and practice. We have so many talented artists out here on the coast. My gosh, we're blessed. Shannon McQuinney is so, um, enthusiastic and so eager to help the young people in the community embrace art and I think that's really cool because when I was growing up I was kind of discouraged from making art and more encouraged to be a math person which I'm not so I really love her for that and Marla Thirsk has been pretty influential as well and she's one of the people that tried to say that schooling doesn't make you legit just do it <laughs> so that's pretty awesome I always feel like there's a bit of a closet art community here which I'm so thankful for Praz because I think it helps bring a lot of people out in that shell and I know there's a lot of young female artists right now too as well so it's kind of an interesting dynamic I never really thought about it so much before maybe us women are just really good at supporting each other <laughs> There's a statistic that says the $1 spent on art brings $3 to the community. I'm not entirely sure how accurate that is, but I have talked to people on the Gabrielli Arts Committee and they gave me similar numbers for their studio tour. So I know that it's a big economic boom to the community for sure. I'm hoping that things like the creation of the Common Ground Market and, and Praz uh, maybe pivoting a bit will bring more of the locals to light like these videos the review for the official community plan is coming up and uh, I know they want to utilize the whiskey dock area as like a cool spot for tourists or whatever if they could shut that road off and put just little small buildings and rent those to artisans it would be amazing I, I really wish that there was more arts in the community plan so if people were actually looking at this review of the community plan it'd be super nice to include some some space for arts and public arts and as well as venues for sure i think that would make that area so interesting a single mom i relied on the markets and my creativity to kind of help uh, make the paycheck stretch a little further so I've always kind of been in the markets and that sort of thing I think my first memory of selling or or doing it economically here was Marla Thirst used to run the Christmas craft sales through that I kind of um, I don't know Marla and I hit it off who doesn't love Marla I think Marla has been a real encouragement and Signe at Reflecting Spirit Gallery I took some work to her and she happily accepted it she's awesome for encouraging people and boosting people and getting people to try new things um, she'll see some of my stuff on the internet sometimes and hey say hey can I sell that at my store I think she has a pretty good idea of what moves she's definitely very encouraging and a big part of the art scene too. I think maybe sometimes people don't think of her so much as that because it, they see the, her gallery, which represents all kinds of artists, but she's an amazing artist in her own right. She wants to be the center of attention. Hey, Blue, go, get, get, go on. I think I end up taking in strays um, I fostered a lot of dogs. I'm a failed foster because I end up keeping them. This guy was at the pound forever because they said he was deaf, but he, he can hear just selectively like most of the people I know. And that little cat came home in my uh, son's hoodie pocket. She was found on Highway 4 and she only has one eye and she's been with us for about 19 years now. <laughs> and I just inherited some cockatiels. So yeah, lots of animals here. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I like them. <laughs> I started learning about textile waste and how terrible it was for the environment, especially denim. And so I kind of challenged myself to find something that I could do with the denim. I'm not really good with sewing machines. So I learned about these no sew rugs. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna 
do that. So I've made a bunch of them for myself. And the Army Navy currently has this free store going on and they have a problem with that fast fashion, I call it. People buy things and throw them away because they're out of style or they never even wear them. So I'm hoping to teach a whole bunch of people how to make these rag rugs. And it's kind of been a mission of mine to keep stuff out of the landfill. I'm always kind of working on something. I'm busy with my hands all the time. My husband likes television. I'm not at all a television person. so. So sitting around making these rugs at night was, is kind of my zone while he's watching TV. But I feel like if I can teach a bunch of people and they can teach other people, we can make fabric kind of dear again and keep a bunch of it out of the landfill, which is pretty exciting to me. So I've tried a couple different techniques and I'm sure there's more that I still have to learn. But once you've got it, you can whip them off pretty quick. Yeah, I think it takes more time to cut the fabric up than it actually does to put it all together. I don't use the pockets in the waistband and I do cut the seams off. So you end up with like a hollow parapet. <laughs> Maybe that'd be trendy somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> I'm Bonacher Algonquin, so the Ottawa Valley area. I learned to bead when I was young because I'm First Nations. It's kind of a traditional art, so I, but I was kind of putting my own spin on it and making these cool little beaded mermaid dolls and stuff. And I'm hoping to maybe incorporate a little bit more of like the traditional woodland style into my art as well. I did some of it when I was going to school. Some of my pieces were based on culture because I am mixed race, I want it to balance just like me. So that's something that I would aspire to do the one year from now, that's maybe. <laughs>